Two figures are approaching an oil well. One of them holds a lighted torch. What are they up to? Are they going to rekindle the blaze? Has life without fire become unbearable for them? This is a video essay about the 1992 Werner Herzog film Lessons of Darkness, which I first saw in June 1998. First things first, this is not Herzog's 1971 film Land of Silence and Darkness. Before making this video, I asked a few of my friends if they remembered Lessons of Darkness and most of them said, oh yeah, the one with the blind lady on a plane. And that's Land of Silence and Darkness. So no, not that film. This is Herzog's 1992 film made with footage filmed in Kuwait at the end of the 1990 to 91 Gulf War. Secondly, you should really know who Herzog is already, but if you don't, well, I would be a little surprised, maybe a little disappointed, even though I suppose it's not impossible, but okay. For those those who might not know, Werner Herzog is a German filmmaker and a living giant in the world of contemporary cinema. Principally, what you need to know about him is that he makes two kinds of films, fiction and documentary. But he himself doesn't like this distinction at all. As far as he's concerned, just makes films. Some of his fiction films are more documentary than anything else, and some of his documentary films are more like fiction. A good example of a documentary which is more like fiction is his 2005 film The Wild Blue Yonder, which takes NASA footage and footage shot in the South Pole, mixes it with interview footage of actor Brad Dourif, and creates the story of an alien visitor to Earth. It has nothing to do with NASA, nothing to do with the South Pole, Nothing to do with the actor Brad Dourif, he's playing a character. Bear all that in mind, because we'll come back to this. Thirdly, Lessons of Darkness joins a very small number of films that I watched on a bad day, and which subsequently turned my day around. Let me explain. Most of the time, if I'm having a bad day, or in a bad mood, or have recently just had an argument or something, it's kind of difficult for me to focus on a film. I'll just think about whatever it is that's bothering me, replaying highlight reels of upset in my head, and the film slips by without me giving it my full attention. So, I was having a bad day when I saw Lessons of Darkness, but the film genuinely swept all of that away. The only other two films I can think of which have done this for me are Rob Zombie's 2005 film The Devil's Rejects, and David Lynch's 2006 film In Empire. I really don't know what it was that allowed these three films to turn my days around, but I am grateful for it. So what is Lessons of Darkness? Lessons of Darkness takes footage from the very end of the 1990-91 Gulf War and turns it into a meditation on war in general, or a meditation on what it is to witness madness and what it is we learn from darkness. At the 1992 Berlinale screening of the film, the crowd booed Herzog. They called him a dangerous reactionary. They were outraged that he'd taken footage from the end of a real conflict and had stripped all the details away and presented it more like a science fiction film. Amazing Maybe you're mad about this too. If you lived through the 1990-91 to 91 Gulf War, then you'll be very familiar with the kind of images that I'm showing you now, because this is how the war was presented. Nameless, faceless, anonymous, and Herzog wasn't crazy about this, in the same way that he's not crazy about how most people film landscapes. You see, Herzog often talks about how he feels films and filmmakers are cheapening the planet, how they take a landscape and turn it into something pleasant and digestible, creating a postcard image of a landscape, something that is meant to look nice and to make you feel good. Herzog doesn't believe in postcard landscapes. He believes in ecstatic truth. And his understanding of ecstatic truth is something that doesn't have a clear dictionary definition because he thinks it's something you have to live through. You have to experience it and you learn the truth of it that way. And it's not something that can just be explained to you. I have my own understanding of what I think Herzog is talking about and I may be wrong here, but I think it's partly wrapped up in the sublime. The sublime is an art history term that refers to the feeling of awe built up in an onlooker when faced with the grandeur of nature. Nature. It's not a pleasant feeling or a nice feeling, it's something overwhelming, something huge, something that is meant to make you feel lightheaded, unsteady and small. What Herzog wants to achieve in his films is a poetic reality that captures the human experience more successfully than anything that can be achieved by just reporting facts. You might disagree with this, but he finds fact-based documentaries to be the work of accountants, not poets, and he thinks cinema is the realm of craftsmen, athletes and poets. Lessons of Darkness is narrated by Herzog himself. His voice is a whole part of it. As Robert Bresson said, the voice is the soul made flesh. All we could find were traces. Had human beings actually lived here? Had there ever been a city? The battle had raged so ferociously that afterwards grass would never grow here again. 
So it's narrated by Herzog himself, and he seems to be taking the role of an alien visitor to a nameless country in a nameless planet which is gripped by war. He witnesses the war-torn landscape, listens to the experiences of people who've lived through the war, and watches the landscape burn. Herzog does not believe there's any deep human insight that can be achieved by saying which war this is, or going into number details on that war, so he allows the war to be shadowy. It is simply a war. This is simply chaos. Absolute madness. And what do we learn from this? What do we learn from darkness? Originally, at this point, I was going to talk about my own lessons of darkness from things which happened to me, but it was all a bit too honest and revealing and a little bit icky, so I've decided to replace it with something that relates to cinema and filmmaking. It's a safer choice, but one which I hope is representative of any darkness that you or people you know may have been through. And I'd like to do this by touching on two specific brief lessons of darkness experienced by the writer Stephen King and the filmmaker Andrzej Zalowski. In 1977, Stephen King published The Shining, and he wrote it because he was worried about his own burgeoning alcoholism and the impact it might be having on his wife and son. King worked through these unpleasant experiences, thoughts, and feelings by creating a piece of fiction that was the playground in which he could safely talk about things that were upsetting him. Similarly, in the late 70s or early 80s, Andrzej Zalowski went through a messy divorce with actress Margarita Brownick. They were living in Paris and he arrived at the apartment she was living in with their son and he saw an image that haunted him. He then took these experiences, thoughts, feelings and this image and created the 1981 film Possession. What Stephen King and Andrzej Zalowski have in common here is that they're turning their darkness into something else. They're taking their lessons from darkness and creating their own world out of it. Lessons which are imbued with a kind of horrific poetry. Side note, that Zalowski was always a little concerned at how popular Possession ended up being. Because it was such a raw personal experience for him, he was not consoled that other people liked the film at all. He found it disturbing, upsetting. Anyway, perhaps this is what lessons of darkness are. Our human ability to take something terrible and to turn it into something new to take the real world and turn it into a piece of fiction. You might think that all filmmaking is about creating fictions and world building in this way, and you might be right, but there's something special for me about films and filmmakers which take the actual real world that we live in and turn it into something else. They don't use effects, they don't shoot in studios, they take the world that we all share together and they make it something new. That's something that filmmaker Justin Brown works on, taking pre-existing archive footage and turning it into something else, something detached from the original meaning of the footage. Figueroa Smile, for example, is home movie footage where Brown has layered it, slowed it down, set it to music, and ends up creating a very different feel than what was originally intended when some unnamed person filmed this footage of an unnamed woman. What kind of moment are we witnessing here? The real world is turned into a poetic understanding of life and we are free to reach any conclusion that we wish. In a similar way, that's what's happening in Lessons of Darkness. The fact that this is Kuwait is not important. The story behind the burning of the oil fields is lost, and all that remains is the image of firefighters dampening the blaze, then starting it up again. The accountant's world is replaced with the poet's world. There is no sense to be made of any of this. It is madness. Because war is madness. Life is madness. And wonderful. And beautiful. And terrible. And upsetting. So what's my lesson from Lessons of Darkness? Well, I think it would be weird to take any precise lessons from any given Herzog film. I feel like they're all supposed to be shrouded in mist, and subsequently they will mean different things to different people. But I definitely think there's something about living in the real world, and something about seeing images that haven't been seen in a particular way before. There's something about an artist's interpretation, and not being bound to representing things the way they happened, but instead finding a way that your images sounds and words can tell a deeper truth. Martin Scorsese said that filmmaking is all about what's in the frame and what's not in the frame. Robert Bresson said you can't show everything. If you do, it's no longer art. And all of these things kind of tie together for me. Lessons of Darkness is something awful that happened, and now it's something else. If you're a young person, you probably don't know much about the 90-91 Gulf War, and Lessons of Darkness is not going to help you with this. But if you're interested in being human, and if the blood of a poet runs through your veins, then you probably will get something from it. And maybe that's my lesson. 
Watch films that tap into your own understanding of ecstatic truth. Films that further your understanding of this crazy world and what it is to be a human being witnessing it and trying and failing to make sense of it all. And hopefully to watch films which can find you at a deep, dark, difficult moment in your life, just like I was when I found Lessons of Darkness, and lift you out of it by being something bigger and more important than yourself. The first creature we encountered tried to communicate something to us.